I've not done a video for a while, but progress on Spam 1 is still continuing. And if you look over at the Hackaday site, you'll find some posts there from me. Now, Spam 1 needs some blinking lights, so I've been working on these 8-bit uh, um, modules. Uh, two seven segment displays, 8 bits in, uh, read out two digits. And you can see there's been a bit of an evolution as, I, as I've worked on the design. Originally, I had this design here that used uh, two um, DM9368 chips, classic chips, um, but you can see that it requires one chip per digit. And this original design was uh, pretty big, took up rather a lot of space on the, uh, on the, on the breadboard. Um, now, there were other problems as well. It turned out that the first two of these that I bought were great, but um, the subsequent eight I bought were all counterfeit. So, um, also, they're about five quid each on eBay. So, that started to look a little bit less appealing to me. So, uh, I started looking elsewhere. So, I changed to using um, a PIC microcontroller. It's buried away underneath here. Um, you can just see it there sitting underneath the display. And that's turned out to be a much better design for me. There's a big difference in size, of course, because I only need um, one chip in this design for both digits. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. This was the Mark II design, and it's, um, it mounts through long pins into the breadboard. It's got some female headers here that allow me to um, wire the device up either from the top or via the long pins at the bottom. Um, but even this um, eventually uh, was a bit too big for me because... Um, uh, the, the wings on the side, top and bottom here project out over the rest of the uh, breadboard and so it's difficult to make wiring quite kind of difficult even though you've got the access from the top I wanted um, to wire it um, directly onto the board and then place the, the uh, um, display in amongst the wires. So I spent a bit more time and it evolved into this design. Now this design here, um, the, uh, the, the module is no bigger than the seven segment displays that are sitting on it. In fact, it's a little bit smaller, actually. I, I made sure that the um, board itself was cropped back slightly. So similar design to before. You can see I haven't actually even got around to soldering one of these yet. Similar design to before, you've got um, some long pins enabling mounting into the, into the breadboard. And underneath here, we're going to have a socket um, for the PIC and microcontroller to sit in. So I'd never um, seen a PIC microcontroller prior to this. Uh, I'd heard plenty about them, of course. Now that I've used it, I'm, I think they're really cool devices and the IDE that comes with it from Microchip is actually really good as well. The PIC that I chose to use was the PIC16F18446. Let's just take a look at the data sheet. So here's the data sheet for the device, the PIC16F18446. There's an LF version as well. So LF is three volts, um, F is five volts. Um, there's IP and EP extensions on the end of the name as well that just tell the temperature range of the device I found out. The, you can see the pin out here, got the supply here, it's five volts on the top left, which is an unconventional position if you're used to TTL and ground over here on the top right, pin 20. I got those around the wrong way, burned out a chip, not good fun. There's 18 IO pins, and I'll just show you in a second now um, how I've used those over in my design. If we flip to the, to the GitHub site. So here we are again. Um, so the way it is, is we have eight inputs over here on the right, and I've labeled them D in zero to D in seven. We've got the seven segment outputs seg a b c d e f g and the design that i've gone for in this device here is where the um, there's two two extra pins on the pic microcontroller are connected to the common cathode on the displays so those are digit h for high digit l for low um, so when the digit h or digit l outputs are low then current is able to flow from the segment outputs and back into the um, digit select pin I'll just, just take a look at the um, schematic for that quickly. Here's a schematic. So you can see those the digit select pins. If you follow that trace around, you see it comes back into the common cathode via a current limiting resistor. So I've got that down as 500 ohms here. It really kind of depends on what display you're using. So I found that green LEDs are particularly poor performing, at least the ones I have. So. Um, for green LEDs to get a decent brightness, you need something like about, I don't know, 250 ohms or 200 ohms. 
whereas with red and blue LEDs, at least the ones I've got again, um, 1K is pretty good actually. I've, I've got 500 here because it's kind of halfway between this, what I found was good for the green and, and what I found was good for the reds and the blues. Now again, here's, here's the um, eight inputs. So we're eight bits in, and over here we're on the left-hand side, we've got the seven um, lines going out to the individual segments. So those lines out to the segments are multiplexed across the high and the low digits. And which digit, which of the two digits is actually going to be lit at any given time is controlled by these signals here. As I said, when this line is low, then current is able to flow through the LED and out back to the device here. The pins on the uh, pick are actually able to handle 20 milliamps. I need a fraction of that. Uh, the green, to get a nice bright green, you probably want to put about 10 milliamps down this wire here, coming through. So across all those um, LED segments, it'll be about 10 milliamps. For the reds and blues, a couple of milliamps is sufficient. Five is fine. So choose the current limiting resistor um, accordingly. I suppose after the fact, I realized it'd be quite nice if there was a little surface mount um, potentiometer here instead of uh, what I'm going to have to do, which is um, um, hardwire a regular resistor in here. But yeah, if you had a, uh, a potentiometer, then you could just flip out these um, LEDs from the top here because they're sitting into a female header. Potentiometer would allow us to um, change the brightness as needed. But anyway, um, perhaps for a future design. I don't use this pin here. This is um, uh, pin RA3. Uh, there's, there's 18 IOs. I only need 17 for my purposes. But I was thinking after the fact that maybe that could have been used as like a chip select. So when it's turned on, you would blank the display. Or um, maybe it could be used like a latch. So um, as it's low, when it's low, it could be sampling and the, the displays could be updating. And when this um, RA3 pin goes high, it could latch the value that's currently on display. Um, to do that, I just have to change the software. There's no hardware change needed because I brought out um, all of these lines here onto these uh, these uh, wire wrap uh, headers that I've got here. I should say, yes, these are in fact wire wrap headers pushed into pushed through the, the circuit board. And that enables me to have, um, it'll fit into a, into a breadboard and it'll still leave quite a lot of clearance underneath it. Um, you can see that effect here with this old design. Um, if I push that into the breadboard, you can see it floats in space. So there's plenty of room here for, for wiring underneath it. Okay, so I really want to see this thing in action. Um, so I'm going to solder a couple of these um, wire wrap uh, pin headers um, into place. And then I'll put a couple of 470 ohm resistors in there. Probably be mount them from the bottom. And then... Um, I put a couple of headers on these outside rows here for the um, LEDs to sit into. Let's just get on with that quickly. Okay, so that's the finished display. It's quite neat, small. As I say, no bigger than it needs to be. Long pins for mounting into the, into the breadboard down here. Let's just see how that looks. So there we are, pop it in there. All right, let's get five volts, five volts supply onto the breadboard. Okay, and then bring that down onto the microcontroller. Let's use orange for five volts, remembering that the five volts is on this side. I'll keep reminding myself of that because I have made that error a couple of times. Okay, take the zero down, put it in there. An array, FF. Okay, so there's pull-ups on the, on the inputs built into the pick. The inputs have got pull-ups, so it'll naturally read FF in that condition. So if I then instead um, put a pull down on one of those pins, let's just get another wire. Okay, so let's just pull down the topmost bit. Okay, hurrah, seven. There we are, that is exactly what I'm looking for. Brilliant. So we've got kind of a combinatorial 
effect. The, the, the input um, affects the output instantaneously, no need to clock it or anything like that. So it's a bit like an 8-bit version of that um, DM9368 that I was talking about. Um, and a very small, neat package, perfect for breadboarding. Thanks very much.